குறிஞ்சி சீனியர் செகண்டரி ஸ்கூல் சிபிஎஸ்இ நாமக்கல் சக்சஸ்ஃபுல் ரிசல்ட் ப்ரொடியூசிங் ஸ்கூல் இன் ஸ்டேட் எவ்ரி இயர் அட்மினிஸ்டர்ட் பை த போர்ட் ஆஃப் டிரெக்டர்ஸ் வித் ஓவர் 35 இயர்ஸ் ஆஃப் எக்ஸ்பீரியன்ஸ் இன் தி டீச்சிங் ஃபீல்ட் ஸ்பெஷல் அட்டென்ஷன் ஆன் ஆர்ட் கிராஃப்ட் மியூசிக் டான்ஸ் சிலம்பம் யோகா ஸ்கேட்டிங் அண்ட் கராத்தே ஃபோக்கஸ் ஆன் ஹிந்தி சபா அண்ட் ஸ்பெல் பி ஒலிம்பியாட் எக்ஸாம்ஸ் ஸ்மார்ட் கிளாஸ் ஃபார் எஃபெக்டிவ் அண்ட் இனோவேட்டிவ் லேர்னிங் அண்ட் வெல் ஃபர்னிஷ்ட் லைப்ரரி சாலிட்டரி இம்பார்டன்ஸ் ஆன் ஸ்போர்ட்ஸ் அண்ட் கேம்ஸ் இன் ஸ்டேட் அண்ட் நேஷனல் லெவல் வாட்ஸ் அப் facilities to know activities of students and school inside the campus neat jee iit coaching experts from rajasthan and andhra pradesh along with our effective teachers admission registration for classes lkg2 plus 2 kurunji educational institution kaveti patti namakkal admission in progress cbse kg2 12th contact 9025895176 metric 6212th contact 9344567484 for online admission log on to www.kurunjischoolnkl.com okay ma now uh, continuation information of for proteins let us see so in a previous video we discussed you now we learned uh, regarding proteins so proteins are heteropolymers uh, and uh, here so definitely proteins are the made up of uh, uh, made up of amino acids so when amino acids so are linked together definitely results in the formation of proteins likewise and here their proteins point of view their uh, two different types of proteins are there essential proteins and non essential proteins likewise some more primary information we have learned so for continuation or uh, continuation of proteins so now in this video we are going to discuss not only continuation of the proteins and uh, here in this video purely and perfectly we will discuss regarding structure of proteins okay ma so structure of proteins now uh, let us uh, start to discuss one by one right now uh, yeah proteins carry out amasema so proteins carry out many functions in living organisms so if you see if you take living organisms there definitely proteins performs or proteins performs a lot of functions or simply so a lot of functions we can consider a lot of functions in a living organism so ange some of the most important uh, uh, functions here uh, i brought for you so there some uh, some kind of a proteins you know, which are uh, which helps in a transport of nutrients transport of nutrients across the cell membrane point you understood ma so here some kind of a proteins or helps in the transport helps in a transport of what nutrients uh, across the membrane so that's why if you remember some what uh, information uh, fluid mosaic model in cell the unit of life we all know singer and nicholson proposed fluid mosaic model so there uh, like uh, intrinsic proteins and uh, extrinsic proteins like was two types of uh, proteins we discussed so there so such kind of uh, proteins helps in the carrying of or helps in the transport of nutrients ये मार ट्रांसपोर्ट ऑफ न्यूट्रिएंट्स और आयोन्स अक्रॉस द मेम्ब्रेन सो डेफिनेटली यूज हो सो डिड यू रिमेंबर दैट एक्सप्लेनेशन डायग्राम आल्सो डायग्रामेटिकल एक्सप्लेनेशन वी लो नो आजिदा सो देयर बाय सम काइंड ऑफ प्रोटीन्स हेल्प्स इन द ट्रांसपोर्ट ऑफ न्यूट्रिएंट्स अक्रॉस द मेम्ब्रेन एंड सम काइंड ऑफ प्रोटीन्स हेल्प्स फॉर फाइटिंग अगेंस्ट द इंफेक्शियस organisms next one सम आर हार्मोन्स आर देयर एंड सम आर एंजाइम्स आर देयर लाइक वाइज means so there are different types of uh, uh, proteins so means some kind of a proteins helps in the transport of nutrients across the membrane and some kind of a proteins helps for the uh, fighting uh, fighting against the infectious organisms and there some more hormones are there and some enzymes are there emma now your uh, neat examination point of view two important bits are there one is collagen collagen is a abundant protein in animal world emma which one collagen is a abundant protein in animal world and the ribulose bisphosphate carboxylase and oxygenase idi so from here to here one one scientific name of uh, which one one or enzyme enzyme name so that is is ribulose 15 or bisphosphate simply okay ribulose 15 bis phosphate carboxylase and oxygenase so it is an enzyme name so simply we will be considering as rubisco emma so now here the collagen is abundant protein in animal world and the rubisco is a most abundant protein in biosphere biosphere means in plants so we will observe this particular enzyme more and more 
ama point kurida so rubisco enzyme is abundant protein in biosphere whereas collagen is abundant protein in the animal world okay now there are different types of uh, uh, enzymes are there so one uh, if you see one function no? so here let us see so let us concentrate here the collagen collagen is an intercellular ground substance so definitely so here we have seen no? collagen is an intercellular ground substance so next one trypsin is an enzyme and insulin uh, is a uh, hormone and antibody antibody definitely that fight uh, fights against the uh, infectious agents and the receptor is a sensory uh, sense uh, like a sensory reception or uh, for smelling of uh, uh, smelling point of view taste or the hormones etc and glut for is important amma. so glut for that enables the glucose transport into the cells okay glut for that enables the glucose transport into the cells so thereby here there are different types of proteins are there collagen is there and uh, insulin trypsin antibody receptor glut for likewise so there are different types of uh, uh, types of uh, proteins with different uh, functions uh, so we are learning okay so first of all if you see there now collagen so collagen is an intercellular ground substance Next one, trypsin, if you see there, it is an enzyme. Insulin, hormone, antibody that fight against the infectious agents. Next one, receptor, sensory reception is there. Next one, GLUT4, uh, GLUTM, GLUT4 that enables the glucose transport into the cells. So last one, so, so many examinations, they are asking as a statement. Okay, next one, now let us see the structure. Let us see the structure of proteins. Now up to here, so from here to here, what are the main important points we have discussed? So there are different types of proteins over there. So some kind of proteins helps in the transport of nutrients across the membrane. Okay, so transport of nutrients. So means here, suppose the trans uh, movement of nutrients from the one place to another place, or from the, the uh, inside to outside, or outside to inside. Definitely, sometimes you no know, is under the regulation of proteins. So what are the proteins mainly involved in the transport? No, so such kind of proteins we will be considering as a carrier proteins. Okay, oh, did you remember uh, passage or passive transport, active transport, likewise we have learned some more information now. So there also uh, proteins involvement is there. Suppose uh, while movement of nutrients process is going on, suppose without energy if the movement of ions or movement of uh, either molecules suppose taking place from the one place to another place, without uh, uh, energy passive we will be taking. Suppose while uh, uh, taking the uh, health or help of of, uh, which one ATP suppose if the molecules moving from the one place to another place that kind of transport we will be considering as active transport Emma so active transport uh, definitely involvement of ATP we will observe whereas in a passive transport now there is no involvement of uh, ATP in the form of energy Emma next one collagen is abundant protein in animal world and in plants or uh, in a photosynthetic means uh, simply in autotrophs no why because plants we will be considering as autotrophs now so what are the plants having the capability to perform the process of photosynthesis simply we can be taking them as uh, autotrophs so there in autotrophs kandipa rubisco enzyme is present why because in a in a photosynthesis po uh, point of view uh, definitely rubisco enzyme is required uh, for the absorption of or for the receiving of atmospheric carbon dioxide Emma, next one here few points we have discussed and out of all GLUT4 is important GLUT4 enables the glucose transport into the cells Emma, next one and now let us start to discuss the structure of proteins so from here onwards so depth levels will be increased listen carefully now the structure of molecules okay now the, the structure of molecules means different things different things in a different context so means here uh, why why we have written like this means once you see there the structure of molecules means different things in a different contexts so means if you take one subject there the structure of molecules they explain so on their own and if you take another subject now there they will explain the structure of a molecule in their own uh, uh, different uh, in their own context so likewise here once you see uh, here we will be discussing about the inorganic chemistry as well as organic chemistry 
uh, organic chemistry and one more is physics and one more biology so here in these uh, lines you know definitely we will cover the four different types of subjects so wh wh what is the consideration they will be considering yeah, so in order to explaining the structure of any kind of molecules now let us see uh, in organic chemistry point of view in organic sorry ma once you see in inorganic chemistry okay in inorganic chemistry uh, what is that the structure is a variable variably refers to the molecular formula so means if you take inorganic chemistry point of view structure of molecules so, so definitely uh, we will be explaining by the taking of molecular formula in molecular form for example NaCl MgCl2 likewise we may take am a point for you so means in case of inorganic chemistry okay structure of molecules so definitely they will explain uh, first by taking the help of molecular formula okay next one organic chemistry point of view organic chemistry point of view always write uh, a two dimensional view of the uh, of the wall okay so two dimensional view so enough organic chemistry point of view definitely for explaining the structure of a molecule definitely they needed two dimensional view of the structure while uh, definitely so here uh, while of the representing the structure of the molecule and the benzene and naphthalene likewise they may take okay so i which one in concern of uh, organic chemistry so two dimensional view they will concentrate more uh, not only that one uh, so oh uh, yeah by taking of that one now they will explain the structure of molecules for example benzene and naphthalene etc next one physicist so physical uh, uh, physics or teachers point of view so they consume of the three dimensional view of the molecular structures so they needed three dimensional view of the molecules so, so for explaining the structure of the molecules so thereby here one point let me highlight by one more time if you take inorganic chemistry teachers so, so they will explain the structure of molecules by taking the help of molecular formulas if you take organic chemistry teachers point of view they will first of all they will ask us to provide the dimensional view of the structure so then only they can start to explain the structure of molecules for example naphthalene or benzene likewise suppose if you take physics teachers first of all they will ask or they will provide a three-dimensional view for the study of molecular structures so means in a physics three dimensional view is required and in organic chemistry two dimensional view is required whereas in inorganic chemistry definitely molecular formulas are required to study the structure of molecules but sir what about our biology so biology point of view what is the thing is required so now here our subject biology point of view so we will divide or we will explain the structure of proteins as four levels or at four levels so, so here there are different types of four levels we will observe so thereby according to the biology teachers point of view so definitely we will divide the proteins we will divide the protein structures into four levels so four levels so, so what are those now first one and second one i'll give you so based on that you can guess what are the remaining two so first one primary structure second one secondary structure third one can you guess tertiary structure and fourth one quaternary structure so but in this video so let us have a look on the primary structure secondary structure and tertiary structure so fourth one means quaternary one in the next video let us discuss right now let us start to discuss the structures of proteins one by one now the sequence of amino acids once one more time the sequence of amino acids that is the positional imagine uh, sorry the positional uh, information the positional in information in a protein which is the first amino acid so means here positional information so here the positional proteins or positional information of your proteins we will be considering so there uh, there are four levels of proteins are there no so let us start to discuss about the uh, primary structure primary structure so now <laughs> primary structure point of view primary structure of your protein i'm listen carefully Emma. why because important 
now primary structure of a protein imagine so we can imagine so we can we can imagine that particular uh, protein structure as uh, our primary structure as a line one particular simple line mother so once you come down and once you see there so here uh, one line is there now so this part even this particular line we can be considered as primary structure okay now the primary structure of your protein suppose if you take uh, that one we can imagine we, we can imagine as a line so there suppose if you take one particular line there left end uh, left end we can be taken or represented by the first amino acid emma left end so here left end we will be taking as a first amino acid and the right end right end is represented by the last amino acid emma so thereby here what is the main important point we are discussing suppose if you take a primary structure of a protein so that particular primary structure of a protein being like a line or being like a straight line so in this particular case so definitely we will discuss so here uh, this particular line if you see there no left end we will be considering as emma first amino acid and right end we will be considering as last amino acid isn't it so there um, first end and last end you try to remember now first end first end or the left end okay so left end uh, we will be considering by one more name first amino acid is also known as n terminal amino acid emma okay, so what is uh, amino acid is uh, situated at the left side that particular amino acid we are considering as first one and uh, so that particular end or uh, what is uh, amino acid is present at the left end you know that particular amino acid we are calling by one more name n terminal amino acid n terminal emma n terminal amino acid and the last amino acid means uh, here towards the right side that particular amino acid we will be considering as a c terminal amino acid so thereby here how we have to remember no first n apro end no uh, or in a last no c so thereby n no c n terminal amino acid will be in a left side there we will be considering or we will be taking the first amino acid and c terminal amino acid why we will be taking you no know, there uh, last amino acid is there emma that is also at right side or right end am a point purida so thereby here if you take one particular line just one simple line if you see there no there or uh, definitely left end will be there as well as right end also will be there so left end uh, what is the left end we are finding in one particular line no there first or the left end uh, uh, we will be considering as a first amino acid uh, of a primary structure of a protein next one right end pattern go there uh, last amino acid we will be considering so first amino acid so we will be calling by one one name c terminal amino acid and the last amino acid if you see there you no know, that one we will be considering as c terminal amino acid emma so there by simple emma uh, n terminal amino acid will be the first one and c terminal amino acid will be the last one emma so this one you try to remember and what is the structure emma what is a uh, structure of a primary primary structure of a protein it is a simply one straight line emma it is a line next one second one if you see there no secondary structure point of view okay now secondary structure of a protein secondary structure of a protein point of view now a protein is a, that is is a does not ama here nalla understanding pannikonga but i'll explain listen carefully now secondary structure point of view a protein thread does not exist throughout as an uh, extended rigid rod next one the thread is a folded in the form of a helix once you see what is the first line meaning suppose if you take one protein thread does not exist throughout as an extended rigid rod means here suppose if you take one protein as one line or one thread no that will not be like all the time like a thread so definitely there the thread is folded in the form of a helix so there what is a thread like a protein we will be considering as a primary one no definitely in a secondary structure point of view that will be folded and form a helix 
Okay. So definitely here, uh, secondary structure, how we can uh, we can recognize or we can identify means by seeing the foldings of helixes. Means here, primary structure we are considering as a line. But in a secondary structure, what is a line or what is a thread-like structure we are taking now? That will not be like a structure or that will not be like a rope all the time. Sometimes it will be folded. So what are the foldings are they? Or why uh, this particular thread-like structures are folded? So definitely forms the helix-like structures. Okay, so at the time you can ask, sir, if uh, primary structure we have taken as uh, one thread-like structure, sir, one line madri. Suppose second one helixes means some kind of uh, uh, helixes or folded we are uh, we are observing. So these folding folding structures only we are calling as a helixes. Okay, sir. Then if you take primary structure completely, that will be folded as our main. So no will not be folded completely so that information now i have written once you see here uh, of course only some portions of the protein thread are arranged in the form of a helix means suppose if you are considering one protein as a thread like structure there all portions of the proteins of the thread will not be uh, converted into helixes so just uh, somewhat some of the portions of the protein thread are arranged in the form of helixes here we have taken we took one thread like structure so there one or two helixes chances so likewise so if we are observing the any kind of a folding so in a thread like a protein like structure or in a thread like protein structure now that particular uh, uh, foldings so we have given a name it as a helixes so helix next one here uh, in proteins only right handed helixes only are observed this is important point so means here we our knowledge point of view there are different types of proteins over there isn't it primary is there secondary is there tertiary is there and one more quaternary also is there isn't it but here one point we are highlighting more and more that point is in proteins only right handed helixes only right handed side or right hand side helixes only only are observed so there is no left handed helixes in proteins okay ma so next one other regions of the proteins or protein thread are folded into other forms so here what is the point here we have discussed now adida Next one, uh, tertiary structure of a protein. So, tertiary structure is important. Uh, here, one or two important points are there to be discussed. Right. In addition, the long protein chain is also folded upon itself. So, means here, if you take one protein structure, a long protein chain. If you take long protein chain, long protein chain, the disease fold, uh, folded upon itself uh, like a hollow woolen ball. Suppose if you take uh, like a hollow woolen ball, you know, how it will be you know? So likewise, so if you take the long chain or long protein chain structure, you know, that will be folded upon itself. So one by one, like uh, if you take a uh, uh, woolen ball, you know, so there how it will be likewise, even these long ch protein chains also folded upon itself and uh, form a, so like woolen woolen ball or it, it appears like hollow woolen ball. Okay, and that gives, it is important. Amma. So this one gives us a three dimensional view of a protein. So here, don't forget, ma. So till now, what are the points I have given explanation? You can forget, except this point. Okay. So means here, uh, our knowledge point of view, there are different types of protein structures are there. So out of these are all structures where we are observing the three-dimensional view of a proteins means we are observing in tertiary structure. In a three-dimensional view of a protein, so we are observing in tertiary structure and tertiary structure of a protein is absolutely necessary for the many biological activities of proteins. This particular point also, nalla by heart panni kuhunga. Okay, so Sarvikipu, okay, your three-dimensional view, definitely uh, three-dimensional view of proteins here we can observe, sir, in a tertiary structure. Then what is the use of these tertiary structures? 
Emma, what are the uses of these tertiary structures means? These tertiary structures are absolutely necessary for the biological activities of proteins. Suppose if you would like to study about the biological activities, means uh, suppose one particular uh, protein is there, what is the pro or this particular protein activity in the uh, living organism? So, so definitely, so we can get the information of that particular protein in a three-dimensional view. Okay, ma'am. So means so biological activities of proteins, biological activities of proteins only we can observe in tertiary structure only. Emma, so that's why so tertiary structure is absolutely necessary. We have written, Emma, so tertiary structure of uh, tertiary structure of a protein absolutely necessary for the many biological activities. Emma, so uh, so so here that particular point uh, comes under tertiary structure. So till now we have discussed the uh, uh, primary structure secondary structure and tertiary structure of protein. So once let us uh, concentrate on diagrams also once. Once you see there here one straight line we have taken. So N terminal end we, we wrote on the left side and C terminal end uh, we wrote on right side of the straight line. Isn't it? So now here left end uh, what, is, uh, what is the thing here we have written? N terminal. N terminal end which denotes the uh, presence of first amino acid and C terminal end which denotes the last amino acid. So, that's how we do it. This particular small rough diagram is there, no? which denotes or indicates the structure of secondary structure of protein. Next one here you see there. Small children, case, suppose if you give chalk piece, how they will draw. No? So, on the mother, the diagram is there. No? So, this is uh, tertiary structure of a protein and the quaternary structure of a protein a diagram I have drawn. But here, uh, di uh, diagrammatical information uh, I didn't give. In the next video, I will give you. So now, uh, now three dimensional view we can observe in a tertiary structure and a hollow will in a ball like structure we will observe in a tertiary structure of a protein and uh, uh, next one this particular tertiary structure definitely absolutely necessary for the biological activities. If you take a secondary structure, no, there are helixes. The presence of helixes we can observe, and these helixes always will be in right-handed side. Next one, primary structure of a protein. If you see there, no, N terminal end will be there, and C terminal end will be there. N terminal end we will be considering as a first amino acid, and C terminal end we will be considering as a last amino acid. So, our knowledge point of view, structure of proteins, definitely we will be considering uh, or we will be dividing into four levels. Emma, three are completed and fourth one to be completed and will be completed in next video. Emma, so, take care and uh, watch these videos carefully and gain the knowledge. Suppose if you are unable to understand, so in the presence of teachers, once you clarify your doubts, so thereby you will be benefited uh, with your subject. Thank you and be safe at home.